And today's video is going to talk about a TR switch or a transmit receive switch. And it's really just an electronic uh, single pole double throw switch that's used to switch an antenna between say a transmitter circuit and a receiver circuit. Uh, this one we're going to do electronically using pin diodes and a quarter wavelength transmission line. So let's go have some RF fun and see how this works. And again the TR switch allows you to connect an antenna to the transmitter or a receiver uh, so that the receiver doesn't get overloaded or damaged when the transmitter is using the antenna and that the receiver can have sole access to the antenna without being loaded down by the, uh, the transmitter circuitry. So this can easily be done with a relay and is often done that way but uh, by use, doing it with pin diodes and a quarter wavelength transmission line it's done electronically and therefore without using a, a relay it's nice and silent. So let's take a look at the, the circuit. It's actually pretty simple. Right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, so let's say this is our transmitter circuit here, and that's uh, feeding into this structure here, which is really just the switch, a pair of pin diodes, uh, and a quarter wavelength long uh, transmission line, and the antenna is connected here. There's a, a DC control line here that we use to turn the diodes on or off. So the diodes, the pin diodes, and the quarter wavelength transmission line have some properties that make it ideal for this type of an application. Now I did a video on pin diodes and how they could be used for uh, RF switching applications. And I also did another video on just uh, in general how diodes can be used to switch AC signals. I'll link both of those videos down below. Again, to review, pin diodes for switching RF signals are, are ideal because they've got low capacitance, they've got a long reverse recovery time, and that allows the pin diodes to conduct uh, even if the RF signal uh, would tend to reverse bias the diode, but uh, because of the stored charge in the diode, they continue to conduct as if they're forward biased for a little while. And that makes it great for, uh, for switching RF signals. They've got a low forward bias impedance, so when they're forward bias, they present you know, can look like a very low value resistor. And they've got a very high reverse bias impedance. Because of the large intrinsic region, the capacitance is really low. So they really make good switches. Again, take a look at the links in the uh, video description for uh, diode switching and my uh, video on pin diodes to review that. Now we're also using a uh, quarter wavelength long transmission line. Now, uh, what makes this special? Well, I did a video on this also. In fact, the video on uh, uh, tracking generators uh, shows the properties of a quarter wavelength transmission line. So again, I'll link that video down below as well. Now, a quarter wavelength long transmission line is an impedance transformer. Uh, and it's kind of a special case that uh, the impedance that's presented looking into the line is essentially the dual or the inverse of the impedance at the other end. Uh, this is the relationship. So um, we, the input impedance of the line divided by the line impedance is equal to the line impedance divided by whatever is connected to the load. So you can see how the, how the impedance kind of inverts. So what this means is that if you short out, if you place a short at this point to ground, it will look like an open at the frequency at which this is a quarter wavelength. And similarly, if you leave this circuit, this end of the transmission line open, the load side, it'll look like a short circuit at this end at that frequency. So it presents that kind of inverse or dual impedance. And we're going to take advantage of that in the way the switch works. Okay, so knowing these things about the pin diodes and the quarter wavelength transmission line, it's easy to see how this works. Let's consider the case where we're, we're in the receive mode, so we don't have a bias applied here. Essentially, both pin diodes are off. And if they're not biased on, they look like a high impedance, you can effectively take them out of the circuit. And all we have is the antenna coming in through a quarter wavelength long transmission line going into the receiver. Now, of course, this just looks like an extension of the transmission line going to the antenna, so this just works normally. We don't see the output of the transmitter, and we don't see ground here. We just have that path for the receive path. Okay, so let's look at the transmit mode. We essentially apply a positive DC bias to this port here, and we'll either go through a resistor or maybe an RF choke or a combination of the two or you know, apply a current through here. But what we're going to do is basically put a forward current through these two diodes to ground. So when these two diodes are forward biased, they have a very low impedance. You can think of them almost as a short circuit. So the transmitter is going to have direct access to the antenna, no problem at all. But now we're also shorting out the input to the receiver. 
So that's going to prevent signals from getting into the receiver, so that's good. So that's part of what our switch is doing. But what about uh, the transmitter looking down this way? Remember what I said about the quarter wavelength transmission line? It presents the dual of the impedance. So a short to ground at the output of this quarter wavelength transmission line looks like an open circuit at the input of the line. Okay, so that's uh, this, this condition right down here. So from a transmitter standpoint, it's looking down here, it sees the antenna, and looking in this way, it sees an open circuit. So as far as the transmitter is concerned, that's not even there anymore. So um, that's how this uh, simple circuit creates a pretty effective transmit-receive switch that can be done electronically. Now I've got a friend that's building a low-power uh, 30 meter transceiver, or 10 megahertz transceiver for ham radio and uh, wanted to do some electronic transmit receive switching. So let's take a look at how to build a, uh, a 30 meter transmit receive switch. So uh, the first thing we think about when doing this is that we've got a little bit of a problem. Uh, a quarter wavelength long hunk of coax, okay, with a 0.66 velocity factor, you know, a quarter wavelength long at uh, 10 megahertz is about 16 feet long or about 4.9 meters. That's a lot of coax to coil up to stick on a circuit board to, to make this switch. So what we do is instead of using an actual piece of transmission line, we use a lumped element equivalent. Uh, using some simple LC circuits, uh, you can essentially create the equivalent of a quarter wavelength long line. And there's a number of different configurations you can use. Now in our case, uh, we take a look back at our original schematic, I need a DC path okay, through that quarter wavelength line. Uh, so that means that I need to use you know, one of these two you know, equivalent circuits because I don't have a DC path with either of those, so we'll knock those out. And also, uh, since I'm winding my own inductors, I figure let's pick the configuration that only requires one in inductor instead of two. So let's just use this uh, equivalent circuit. Now in order to make the lumped element equivalent of a quarter wavelength line, all we need to do is to make the capacitive and inductive reactance of these elements equal to the line impedance at the desired frequency. So we're basically just going to say x sub L equals x sub C at Z, you know, is Z0 or 50 ohms at 10 megahertz. So if we run through the calculations, we basically say that the inductor is going to be about 790 nanohenries, and the capacitors are going to be about 315 picofarads. And we result in uh, this circuit down here. So this right here is the lumped element equivalent of that quarter wavelength transmission line. So these two capacitors are about 315 picofarads, and this inductor here is about that 790 or so nanohenries that we calculated up here. So that's our electronic equivalent of the quarter wavelength line. Here's our pin diodes here and here, and then I've got the antenna connected here, and then uh, transmit and receive ports there, and I'm just uh, going to apply a bias through a 1K resistor to kind of show how this all works. Okay, so I've built this up on a breadboard, so we're going to go show how it works, but let's discuss it first. Let's say in the receive mode, uh, where the transmit enable is not turned on, both these pin diodes are off, the signal coming down the antenna sees a high impedance of this diode here, so it doesn't go anywhere there, continues on through this you know, LC uh, filter, which looks like just a quarter wavelength transmission line, that's a high impedance, so that doesn't do anything to the signal, and it goes right off into the receiver. Now in the transmit mode, we turn the bias on here, turn these two diodes on, they effectively turn into a near short circuit. So let's replace those with a wire okay, to short things out. Now what's interesting is if we short this guy right here, we're essentially shorting out C2. And that essentially connects this end of the inductor to ground. So that puts C1 and L1 in parallel. Now we've got a parallel resonance circuit. Now remember, the input impedance of a parallel resonance circuit is a very high impedance. Okay, so that looks like a high impedance going that way. So the path is from the transmitter is going to be you know, through this capacitor. That's a relatively high impedance there. It might be an RF choke here. Through the low impedance diode. And then that sees a high impedance at this point looking into this lumped element equivalent to the quarter wavelength line. So therefore the signal just routes right out to the antenna. So to kind of prove how this works, I'm just using it kind of in the reverse direction. I've got a signal generator connected at the antenna port here, and I've got the, channel, uh, the scope channels connected to the transmit and receive ports. So by adjusting the DC bias on the transmit enable, we'll be able to see the signal that's coming in here switch from one port to the other. All right, so this is my little breadboard here. This is the antenna port, 
the transmit port and the receive port. My DC bias is being applied here through this 1K resistor. Uh, this guy right here and this guy back here you might not be able to see are the two pin diodes. And then this is the 790 nano Henry inductor that I hand wound. And then a couple of capacitors to make up to 300 or so picofarads of capacitance on either side of that. And a couple of AC coupling caps to bring the signals through this switch. Okay, so I've got the uh, signal generator hooked up to the antenna port here. Uh, the transmit port is connected up to channel 2 on the scope, which will be the blue trace. And uh, channel 3 is hooked up to the receive port. And then I've got channel 4 probe hooked up to the DC line that I'm going to use to bias up the pin diodes. Okay, so we can see that uh, there's no bias hooked up right now, so the pin diodes are off. And that RF signal is appearing uh, on channel 3, which is the receive port. If I flip the power supply on, which turns on the BIOS to the diodes, you can see the BIOS turned on, and now they, the you know, purple trace here has gone away. That's the receive port. That's not getting the signal anymore. Now the blue trace, which is coming from channel 2, that's the transmit port. That's where the signal is going. If I flip the transmitter back off again, we can see it switches back and back and forth. Now you notice there's about a 90 degree phase shift between those two, and that makes sense because a quarter wavelength line is a quarter wavelength long, a quarter of a wavelength is 90 degrees. That's why I see about a 90 degree phase shift um, between those two signals. Of course it's not exact because I don't have the exact length uh, transmission lines leading to the scope, but you kind of get the idea. Now if I just vary the, uh, the bias on those diodes slowly, you can kind of see what's going on as the signal switches from one path to the other. Okay, so it's a, it's a nice thing about the electronic switching with the pin diodes is that it can be done electronically. It can be driven you know, from a, a microcontroller or some other circuitry inside the homemade transceiver uh, and without the, uh, the clickety-clacketing of a relay. And if you're developing some kind of a low-power transmitter that needs to switch back and forth between transmit and receive you know, reasonably often, you don't want to be hearing a clickety-clack of a relay. So the electronic switching can be really handy. So anyway, I hope you learned a little something about uh, how a pin diode transmit receive switch works and one possible implementation that we showed here using a quarter wavelength transmission line. And again, there's a couple of other auxiliary videos that you might want to view. I've got a video just on pin diodes themselves and some of the unique properties of them that make them really great for an application like this. I've also got a, uh, a more general purpose, you know, how to use diodes in you know, switching AC signals type of a thing and is also a video on how quarter wavelength transmission lines do this impedance transformation between turning an open into a short and vice versa. And all of those things are taken advantage of in this transmit receive switch. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please like the video, uh, click the like if you like it, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and uh, tell your friends. Uh, comments are always welcome, and thanks again for watching.